Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. A lot to talk about from the weekend. We have more Hawks rumors. We had game two of the NBA Finals as the Celtics take a 2-0 lead. And then we had Hurston Walter making his ML day, MLB debut. And we are going to get to that. I don't know if it's this segment or, or this segment or next one. I don't know how we're going to split it up because I, I ha- we have to talk about the Atlanta Braves offense. And I know that I keep saying, you know, we're talking about the same thing over and over on this show. But I am ready to proclaim. And, and I've kind of like started leaning if you've watched me from four weeks ago to where I was last week or two weeks ago, it's just gotten worse and worse. I'm ready to proclaim the Atlanta Braves offense is just bad. Like it, it's not going to get better. You have some guys that will get better. Austin Riley, Matt Olson, hopefully Michael Harris, even though I don't know how much of a guarantee that is because, you know, we've only seen Michael Harris a couple years in this league. So maybe this is who he is for the rest of this year. Maybe he's a little bit better next year. I don't know. I don't think we can just make these assumptions anymore because we are now at a six, seven week stretch of this offense being statistically by whatever statistic you want to find one of the worst offenses in baseball. And that's not me saying they're a bottom 20 offense. I'm talking about they are 30th, 29th. They are 26th or worse in every major category, worst in on base percentage, second worst in batting average, second worst in WRC plus second worst in uh, uh fan graphs, offensive war and 26th in slugging. I mean, they have been downright terrible since April 29th. And it's not like they're playing world beaters. We're talking about, Washington Nationals, the Oakland Athletics. Like, this is about the easiest schedule the Braves are going to face over this last month that they're going to face over the entire season, and they can't hit a damn ball. And then you just don't even get me started on the eye test because it is miserable. These guys are uncompetitive at bats, striking out on three pitches, making minor league pitchers that haven't had success ever at the major league level look like Cy Young candidates. And it's time to stop just saying, oh, it's going to get better. Like, these guys have a track record of success because a couple of those the candidates it's true and yes maybe they might not be the 29th worst offense in baseball but they are not one of the top lineups in the league they're not even close they need multiple guys not just one guys multiple and influx of offensive talent if they want to get better before the trade deadline i'm gonna let that breathe for a little bit it's hard to watch first and foremost like the numbers that you were just said all of those uh big long explanation numbers it matches the eye test because it's been absolutely horrible to watch and there's been like one game every 10 days where the Braves offense shows up and you think maybe just maybe they're back and then they quickly remind you I mean quickly within the next game within the next 24 hours they remind you that that was a blip that was not who this Atlanta Braves offense is I'm still gonna hold uh the the optimistic viewpoint because there are several factors you mentioned it you know the Austin Riley's the Matt Olson's they will turn around um and even if it if, if they don't you know and over the next month uh, I do believe over the second half of the season uh you know all things will uh, go back to being copacetic with those guys. And I actually am going to, you know, kind of lump Michael Harris in there. I know he has less of a track record. The underlying metrics suggest that uh, negative regression was in line for Michael Harris. And maybe you are seeing a little bit of that, but I do think, you know, it's just his third year, second full season uh, in the league. He's ultra talented. He's super competitive. Things generally work out for those kind of guys. Uh, but some of the other guys, yeah. I mean, there's no making excuses uh, for Orlando Arcia batting sixth every single night. I mean, that guy's just not good offensively. But when the Braves' offense was a juggernaut and, and, and you had those lengthy slumps from Orlando Arcia, uh, specifically the second half of last season, uh, you know, you, you kind of just overlooked it because Ronald Kenyon Jr., Matt Olson, Austin Riley, uh, everybody was having career years. Like literally everybody last year had a career year. And now it seems like the exact opposite. The supplementary pieces are having down years and the guys who were supposed to be carrying the lineups, those MVP all-star caliber players are having career worse years. Now, again, it's baseball that, you know, there's ebbs and flows of this game. But we're approaching the point in the season, like you said, where it's kind of like, you know, the wait and see is over. Like it has been, you know, we're in the first week of June and it is pathetic. So it's getting harder and harder to sit here and try and paint this optimistically or say, you know, clearer skies are ahead when we're every single night we're watching a downright pathetic product offensively. Well, I mean, I could I could really take this further and really get doom and gloom here if you wanted to go dating back to Austin Riley when he signed that extension for becoming the highest paid player in franchise history. He has a WRC plus of about 115, 15 percent above league average. That's pretty good. That's not 
uh, amazing. That's not like, oh, three hole hitter. I mean, and that's, and that's nearly, we're getting on, on a close to a two year sample size. So it hasn't been fantastic, at least over entire seasons with Austin Riley since he signed that extension on August 1st of 2022. You can talk about Matt Olson, but I, as I've said, he's not going to have a year like he had last year. He, he's somewhere kind of like a three, four or five war player. That's what he's been his entire career, except for that one outlier season. Ozzy Albies, there's obviously the track record, hopefully Mike Harris, but let's even get even, even worse than that. Those are the four guys you're expecting can be bad. Sean Murphy dating back. And I know injuries, you can't really say, but dating back to the all-star break of last year has been an absolutely terrible hitter outside of a couple years of his entire career Travis Darno hasn't been a very good offensive player Adam Duvall is a fourth outfielder at best Jared Kellenick what's he ever proven and Orlando Arcia sucks so where is like where is the real positivity that you're expecting this offense to really be really good because right now you have one through four and your one through four isn't even hitting well and it's not going to get much better because I'm telling you those guys they could go on a hot streak here or there but over the course of the season, and we were talking about postseason baseball, we are talking about why we've been shut out and stuff like that. Look at the those back half of the lineups and who they really are as baseball players. They're not world beaters. And on a on a broader scale, um, I, I will say, continuing with the excuses, I'm going to do the good cop, you do the bad cop. There are dead balls. And granted, you're just going to have to get over it. You're going to have to, you know, what you have is what you got. But there are dead balls in baseball. And when you're a baseball team like the Atlanta Braves, who lives and dies, we are currently dying by the long ball. This is what happens. We're seeing an absolutely pathetic product offensively. Every single day, there's a couple of games every every so often where you kind of see the light. And then they quickly remind you the next day that this isn't that team. And there's been a lot of uh, track warning flyouts and everything like that. So you can maybe, again, rest your hat on the fact that Austin Riley's going to come out of it. Matt Olson will come out of it, in my opinion. I do think Mike Harris is going to come out of it. And I'll see how you get those four guys to start playing uh, at their potential. And we know that they are very capable over stretches playing well above their potential. And this offense is looking look much better. Granted, those four guys start pulling their weight. This isn't a top 10 offense, but it's not the worst offense in baseball either, like it has been over the six weeks. And when you pair that with an elite pitching staff, then we're getting somewhere. That's that's the goal right now. And, and it's kind of crazy that we're taking step backs of this could be another generational offense. And now we're thinking, well, all we need to be is league average because we have an elite staff, elite pitching staff. Uh, the hope is that, you know, uh, the trade deadline brings change. That's that's the only thing, you know, the dead balls, these guys are going to regress, and the trade deadline and a great pitching staff is what you can hang your hats on. Yeah, I mean, hopefully the pitching staff can stay healthy. They've definitely made that an emphasis as you see them bring up guys like Spencer Schwellenbach and Hurston Waldrop, who will talk about his MLB debut after that. But yeah, I mean, the trade deadline has to be the number one priority. It should be what every Braves fan, it should be what Alex Anthopoulos is thinking about. It has to bring about multiple, multiple guys. And I, and like, I'm it, it just like you had to overkill the pitching staff. You got to overkill this guy and then you play the hot hand, just like you did in 2021. If Adam Duvall gets hot, you know, he's capable of getting hot. If Jared Kellenick's hot, he's capable of getting hot. Get multiple guys in here that are capable of getting hot, whether it's against right-handed pitchers, left-handed pitchers and play the matchups and hope that the top of your lineup gets better. And that's, probably how they're going to do it. We saw them do it in 2020. It's not going to be easy, though. I, we just assume that can happen. But major, major changes because the back half of this lineup, you, you can say all this good stuff about the back half of this lineup sucks. And that's what I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. We'll talk about Hurst and Waldrop after the break.